Hi there, my name is Kyle, and in this video, I want to go through a real world example of why sometimes it's better to just refactor and rethink what you already have instead of trying to build something new and flashy. Sometimes clients think that what they need is a new, a new layout, a new design, um, maybe even switching to a new system, but really all they need is just a, a, a better, cleaner user experience. They need someone to sit down ask some important, some meaningful questions, and then be able to present a better like content architecture or maybe like a better site map or um, maybe even helping the user or the client for the first time actually like really think through who are the users on this website? What are my content buckets? Um, what is my primary audience, my secondary audience, maybe my tertiary audience? And how are they getting to specific pages or what pages are they actually trying to even get to. So that was our role on this project. My team was assigned to rethink the user experience for the website. And they then, uh, they being the client, hired a agency to come up with a design based on the this wireframe and some of the user experience documents that we put together, some personas and, and sitemaps and whatnot. And I think this is a pretty good example of why you don't always have to redesign and refactor everything, or not refactor, but you don't have to redesign and rebuild everything when sometimes just refactoring and rethinking um, your current solution is the appropriate response to your problem. And I say that because they didn't actually end up going with the design. I don't know if this project's on hold or if it's been canned, but uh, what I do know is that what we put together for the user experience document, the new um, navigation structure, uh, some of the new information for the user journeys and the sitemap was implemented in their current website and in their current system. So let's talk about what they actually needed and what we proposed as a solution to what we thought their problem was. So going through their initial website, uh, it was very clear that it was quite cluttered. And the person assigned to like manage the actual website didn't have a, a good grasp on what content would be relevant on a specific page or how to even like kind of group and organize their content. And it's not like we came up with a, a decent solution right away either. It took several meetings and spending several hours on calls with them trying to figure out like how can we group this content in a meaningful way for their audience. So they're primarily focused on small to be small to medium businesses. And what we ended up figuring out is that they had a handful of solutions um, that they could provide. So terminal services, mobile and app stuff, hosted pages, enterprise level solutions for really big companies. So we had a bunch of solutions um, and this seems pretty clean and straightforward now, but on their original website, uh, all these solutions were scattered across a bunch of different pages and then like child pages of those pages. Uh, and it was not easy to you know, find out everything that they offered. So what we decided to do is propose the solution of allowing a business, like a business owner or an employee of a business who needs to find a payment um, processor. Like how do we, afford them the ability to immediately identify themselves as um, one of the target audience members and then like let them put themselves in a bucket and then just kind of like travel down a specific path so they can end up getting to one of these solutions. If they know exactly what they're looking for, that's great. They can click on solutions, figure it out here, or they can scroll down and here's more of these solutions again. Um, so they can go straight to what they want if they're looking for something specific. But Sometimes the businesses or the, the employee doesn't know that they're looking for a specific thing. They might not know they need exactly a mobile app um, card scanner and a countertop terminal. They just know that they take their payments in person. So your payment simplified. I need a solution for in-person payments. Then this allows us to bring them to a solution landing page where they can get solutions for in-person transactions and they can learn about the mobile readers and the countertop readers and POS systems additional tooling and then we have the big thing on the website which is all about getting them to make a call so let's say they're not ready to make a call yet users can then click on mobile readers because that's what they know they need to do they're out on the job site and they need to be able to swipe cards so from there um, 
I only have one page mocked up, so that's why it says countertop terminals, but they then go to the actual solution page. There's some pricing information here. They can schedule a call, and there's now some information about the actual um, payment solution. So why do I think that this is a good example to actually look at? Um, well, because when we were handing over our user experience documents and our wireframe over to the design team, um, we were still a part of the uh, chain of communication between the client and the design team. And we were trying to help clarify some of uh, what we thought were the best solutions to implement into their current project. Throughout a lot of these meetings um, where the design team was presenting their implementation of what we had written up, the client several times throughout every, almost every meeting would say the phrase, just make it more like the wireframe. Sadly, they didn't have any more information to provide to the design team than that. They couldn't really um, clarify what they meant. So the design team was kind of left stranded of like, well, I don't know what you mean. Um, like, do you like the white space or the, the, is it something visual? Because that's their role is the visual. And what I believe the client was trying to verbalize was that they just wanted the simplicity of this. Um, the original few rounds of designs had a lot of the clutter that their current website had and kind of still has. We'll cover that in a minute. But I think they like the simplicity of this, of users can identify themselves as a specific audience member, put themselves in a bucket, and they can, within a couple clicks, get straight to where they're going. Even if they don't know what solution they specifically need, they can identify themselves as someone who needs something from them and then can get straight to that pricing page and get to the information um, along with like getting, if they scroll down straight to the solution if they know what they want or if they just care about cost, there's a nice cost calculator right away so they can figure out exactly what they'd be charged every month. Um, and then there's some extra stuff that it's, it's there, but I don't know if you really need it. Why is this a good example? Well, if we go to their actual website, we look at what they ended up doing. And instead of rebuilding the entire website in a new system and redesigning the entire thing, they ended up just implementing something pretty similar to the wireframe and uh, the new content architecture that we proposed in our user experience documents. So this navigation was pretty cluttered and pretty confusing. Um, I spent I don't know, maybe the first few days on the project, just trying to um, figure out where everything lived on the website, like what the actual solutions were, how they were organizing their content and just doing a general user experience audit. And it was pretty confusing. I would get lost. Um, and then even when I was with the client trying to show them content on their current website and how we thought it fit into the, the, new, um, the new flow and the new architecture, I would get lost trying to figure out where specific things were. Uh, and it just kind of goes to show that like, yeah, this the current structure is pretty confusing and we should really rethink this. So they ended up going with in-store, online, mobile, then they have their pricing stuff, some additional solutions, some products, and then still their blog and everything else. So now when we scroll down, um, they changed a little bit, but they still have in-person. They switched to uh they still have online, but they moved this one to sort of both its mobile solutions. So they figured that works better for most of the businesses that are coming to their website. So that's what they changed it to and made that a new landing page. But they still work functionally the same as what we proposed. Uh, then right away they have the pricing plan. Um, pricing is pretty big for them. I believe they, at least they claim that they are the best priced solution compared to Stripe and Square and I think PayPal as well. So they want people to enter in some numbers right away and get what they'd be charged and then immediately make that call because like whatever number you see on the website is what you're actually paying. Um, now we get back into some of the more cluttered stuff and this is, this is pretty cleaned up compared to what it originally was, but you start getting into like some of the actual payment processing, like details going to those pages. Um, they still really wanted these integration icons of like all the stuff they integrate with. So, you know, I could see keeping this section, um, maybe dropping some of this stuff because this information is on another page. So really we don't want the user to scroll and we don't want them to get 
tied up because people don't actually read everything when they're on websites. They're browsing and their eyes are jumping from you know bold heading to colored section to bold heading, and they're they're just kind of skimming pages looking for something that they think they want to read, and then they'll actually go back and reread like what the the full heading was or what the the copy is below it. Um, so I could see removing this because all this information is on these three landing pages. So really, what what I think we would want to do is drive people to the solution page or um, or the solution grouping page or straight to a solution itself. Um, we could keep these. Talk to payment expert. This could be styled up a little bit, but that's more of a, a visual thing. Um, then we have this partners processing stuff, like more information. Um, probably could keep that. Then we get into some more brand logos um, or like the trust logos. I don't know any of these. I know Ace Hardware, um, but the rest of these, I have no idea what they are. And there's no real context other than I see Ace. I'm like, maybe they do business with them, but uh, this is a little confusing, just kind of left out on its own, ready to apply. That's fine. More call to actions to get them to apply or schedule a call. And then now we're back into some blog stuff. So again, this is pretty, pretty clean compared to uh, the initial homepage, I think, might have been like double this. And they were sticking a lot of information. Like if we go to the online solutions, they had like a ton of this stuff in here. Or if we go to uh, like in-store, I remember specifically they had like the countertop readers and like some of this extra stuff. This was, um, especially the section here with the, the images and then talking about the readers, that was all on the homepage. So they were trying to cram like all the different solutions and some of the different technology that they had to offer they were slamming pretty much everything onto the home page and it was way too much to try to take in all at once so what we want to do is we want to provide the user the ability to immediately again sign themselves to one of the primary audience members and then start like going through the funnel so going into in-store solutions and then you want more information on countertop readers so you click that now we go straight to here, but this could be a page where it has potentially different details. Like here's all the different countertop readers we offer, um, the pros and cons of each one or whatever. So I think that overall this works pretty well. I think this new navigation and just rethinking how they organize their content is much better. And I think it's probably the correct solution compared to trying to rewrite the entire website and port them to some new system and like a bunch of moving parts. It's always easier just to reorganize what you have and rethink your users than it is to try to start from scratch and or try to port stuff over. I do want to tie this now back into a book. So this book here, Don't Make Me Think, and this is the revisited copy where they talk a little bit about mobile stuff and usability, but this book is one of the key things that I have read, you know, somewhat recently that helps to, it's really helped to influence um, some of these solutions I provide to clients and to other team members when we're thinking through problems. Uh, there's a pretty decent section in this book talking about building and maintaining a specific mental model for the user on the website. Like, you know, Pretty much every website's going to be the same thing. You see a logo in the corner and you're going to be able to click it and go to the home page. And then from the home page, users can like anchor themselves and they can orient themselves like this is the home page of the website. And from here, I can spread out and go to like any of these other pages. Um, but you need to kind of follow some of these basic mental model attributes that pretty much everybody follows. Some people want to go completely custom and like make some weird widget on the side that's like this interactive navigation thing that like lets you do this stuff. And some of that stuff's pretty cool, um, but it can get very confusing, especially for I'll say older audience members, people that aren't as tech savvy. Or um, it really depends on your audience. If you're going for like the younger generation, then um, I mean a non-traditional navigation could work, uh, but if you're a business who is selling to other businesses, you know, you should probably make it pretty basic. You you shouldn't have your UI selling your brand and your like custom interactions and animations and all this flashy stuff. Your content should be what drives your website. Content is king. And for this client, they had some decent content but it was just pretty scatterbrained. It was on a bunch of different pages, like half is on the home page, and then the rest of it was spread across a bunch of different pages, and users didn't know how to get to those pages to get the information they're looking for. So 
it's important to not only provide them the content that they're looking for because that's what Google's going to want. It's going to rank you better and promote those pages. But you also need to make sure that you group and organize that content in such a way that users are able to actually navigate to it. So I would, again, highly recommend this book. I believe I've recommended it before on this channel. Um, But it's definitely made me rethink some of the just some of the core, some of the basic things I do. And I've, you know, only had it for a few months now and I've read it twice and I'm seeing real world impact in my day to day job and helping provide better solutions for my clients. All right. That's about it for this video. Thank you for watching.